the Einstein equation. Okay. And also there are some, uh, if we go through a fine tuning, the things become more complicated. And I will not go through this. So in some sense, the implication of Mero and ABS, I think it's still not so clear understand about the full implication. But one important thing is that probably the, in the old days we tried to understand, for example, can we derive, because we know ABS CFT correspondence, but most of the time we just using gravity to take something typical in the CFT because CFT is fully coupled. But can we do it the reverse way? Means that can we use the knowledge of component of field theory and the running the RG and then can we derive the equation of motion in the bus? For example, can we derive the Einstein equation from the RG equation of the component of field theory? And uh, usually, naively, it's very difficult because the RG equation usually is the first order, but the Einstein equation usually is the second order. So actually, there is a mismatch between the order of the equation. So it's not so clear how can we start from a first order e equation and then derive a second order equation in the back. Okay. Is there something a Hamiltonian formalism that you use the first order, uh, second order, and the first order equation? Probably not, not the first time you guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's difficult. I think many people try and then they fail. Yeah. But even in holographic RG, they have something like yeah, but usually you already you already know the answer. It, it actually, that the, the reverse way of usually you start from gravity. Right. And then we run gravity in the Hamiltonian formulation, and then from there you derive an RG equation. That we can do, but we start from first order equation. It's not clear how can oh, we okay. transfer that reduction. Yeah, it's an oxidation. Yeah, so it's it's difficult to do the reverse way, and also RG trajectory actually is not uniquely. You define once you go away from a fixed point. Because we can define R3 fixed point, component dimension very clearly only around a fixed point. We go away from a fixed point, in some sense, you have a loss of field definition. Okay, so you cannot have a way to fix uh, the R3 trajectory. But in some sense, this is good because the ambiguity probably just the reflect the if if we move in of the Einstein gravity. But you still have the way to organize them. And I think the Mero and ABS correspondence means that actually maybe low voltage entanglement is a way to organize this ambiguity. Of course it's not so clear how to do this, but I, I think this map must be a direction people should arm to, to try. And if this ca the case we will expect the boundary dynamics for quantum information should be equivalent to Back dynamics of common gravity. If we can finally make everything clear about this operation, yeah. And I will just yeah, probably you go on and on. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm not going. I, 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 maybe I finish in five minutes. Another five minutes. Okay. <laughs> no, not really. Okay. And and uh, and as I said. Actually, it's, it's a, nowadays the industry to calculate entanglement with quantum field theory because it's a very difficult task. You cannot calculate directly because you want to calculate for me, my entropy is very difficult. It involves a lot of operators. So what we do is we call to calculate the so-called rain entropy, which basically is the moment of the for me, my entropy. So it's a trace of the log A to N power. So if we can calculate this, then by taking this uh, operation, we can get a more minimized. And, and uh, so by doing this, you should, in some sense, you should grow in the density metric together. But because this density metric have a cut, means that if this cut is the region, integral region I want to preserve, I should, in some sense, grow over this region. So in the past integral formulation, it's a, uh, in some sense, you should, it, this is quite so called replica method. In some sense, you should, you should calculate a partition function of all this replica. You should grow in all the cut together and then calculate the total partition function for this space. So it's going to be very difficult. Uh, and uh, in some sense, you deform the operator, deform the, the entanglement entropy by inserting some operator. In some sense, you are calculating the OP of of this all and the service operator. It means that this entanglement 
entropy, this uh, integral regime actually can be understood as a service operator. Usually our operator is a nine operator. We said that consider service operator except the waves and nine. But in, in, in the entanglement entropy case, in some sense we, are, we need to consider the service operator and its OP with the other operator. Which, and, and in sense, in recently we study, we find that this service operator and, and its OP with the other, with the straight tensor is not local. So, so it's not very clear what that mean. So actually, I just want to say that you need entanglement entropy and then go back to study your quantum field theory, you will find something new as we find here. Actually, we calculate the, the universal coefficient of this OP and we find that it's not, it cannot be expressed in terms of local quantity. So it means that the use of OP for service operators should be modified. Probably I should, I should skip this part yes, and, uh, and uh, go to conclusion. Oh, okay. Okay. So <laughs> we have discussed various aspects of content entanglement. And I, I think I cannot go through all of them, but I think as I show you, there are many interesting problems. So actually this topic still remain active and interesting. Okay. And I hope that you can get some inspiration. Okay. And uh, I didn't cover many all the stuff. And how many things I just missed out. Uh, basically, I covered just based on what I have been studying and know at least the basic of the stuff. Okay. And uh, actually, I think we don't have still have deep understanding about the entanglement, especially its origin. Okay. So I just want to say, actually, the brother of the great men are different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. PR and Schrodinger all the way to the deep of the days. So, questions and, and explains why the string people are here. <laughs> Further questions? Okay, Joey. Anyway. In the uh, tensor network part, you mentioned that entanglement entropy depends on the basis that you have yeah. chosen. Yeah. In, are you saying that entanglement entropy uh, depends on the base? Yes. That's, yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. Think if you have taken the trace, then. But you, you, you can locally remove some entanglement. Yeah. For example, if I, I just partition, and then I, I do some local operation around this partition boundary, and I can remove some entanglement to the basis. Yeah. But if the definition depends on the basis that you have chosen, then that's not a good definition. Yeah, but this is always the case, right? If you can always find a, so, if always, uh, uh, that, that, I think conceptually this this is easy to explain why we have some this misconception because you can do the you cannot remove the entanglement by doing only low very local operation. For example, for Bayer state, if you do local operation on one part, you cannot remove the entanglement. But I always can do the two part particle operation. I can change the Bayer state to four part state. Then I will remove the entanglement. That's why. So it depends on the basis, but not depending on the local basis choice. It depends on the global basis choice. At least on the part you want to remove. Yeah. You should up operate on both parties together in order to remove the entanglement between them. Yeah. I think they don't more like me of entanglement, so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> entanglement can only share between two parties. The two parties already in mass by entanglement, it cannot be entangled with this part. And actually, this is an important lesson because this is why people have this firewall issue. Because they realize this would be the case. They cannot, the, the, the Hawking variation cannot entangle with black hole inside of black hole and, and also the early Hawking variation. So they need they need to be choose to only one of them. This is why they find they the firewall issue. Yeah. So okay. monotony is an important issue also. So can you say 
quite outside of the stereotype. We're in tangled space if one side enters behind the horizon, mm -hmm. what happens to the entangled? Entanglement means if the other, if, yeah, it's an interesting question. Original, so entanglement can, in some sense, the, the particle okay, going to. Bob falls like interstellar, okay? Yeah. And then he makes a measurement behind the horizon. Yeah. So what happens to Alice? So artists can still manipulate. Not Alice, Murphy, yeah. right? <laughs> artists still can manipulate the, the outcome of the outside. Yeah, that's, that's the situation. So this why they have this now. So this why we have firewall issue. In the, in the world, usually when we study the near horizon geometry, graphic near horizon geometry, always assume interaction is local. And then once you assume the, the interaction is local, then then the people pass through the horizon, they fear nothing. But nowadays people realize, even you assume the local interaction, they still are local stuff caused by entanglement. And they can do, these things can do something physical. And then you find that some answers in original, assume, in the original horizon study becomes, become, it should be modified, maybe get a firewall issue. Okay, so that's very Okay, I think uh, we've had a lot of discussions already, unless there are still any questions. Let me thank uh, Tommy again.